There's probably a stat somewhere that would tell us that last night was the first night in NFL history that there were two games played and both coaches who lost have almost identical names. Mike McDonald and Mike McDaniel. And Michael Hawley, you might appreciate this, because anytime I hear those names in close proximity, I think of one line from our somewhat shared youth. It's McDaniel, not McDonald. The rhymes are Daryl's, but the burgers are Ronald's. The burgers are Ronald's. Thank you. Oh. That's... All right. Oh, here we Every go. Every time. Listen, if you're, quoting, if you're quoting Run DMC, there we go. I knew it. I knew there was something there. All right. That's right. right. That's exactly what I thought. I didn't think you were going to go there because that was the first thing that came to my mind. And you got to shout it out, too, uh, just like they did. Wow. What a reference. Next a time. Plus. Next time. A plus. I'll, I'll have. Take your, I'll have. I'll have. I'll have. Take your loop. mic off and drop and, it. <laughs> all right. Uh, well, the Dolphins learned it's tricky to gain yards and score points last night, too, if we're going to continue this. And um, what a disaster for the Dolphins. Are, are we learning that Tua is a superhero that they badly miss? and the city is in flames without him? Or, you know, it's not like the offense with Tua was pinball machine scoring. They were down 17-7 to the Jaguars before Javon Holland punches the ball out and gives the Dolphins late life week one. Before Tua suffered his concussion that following Thursday night, it was not going well for the home team. Tua had three interceptions, and... They were all his fault. That's gotten overlooked because the obvious concern was his health. But it's not like it started off like it did last year. So is it a Mike McDaniel thing? Is it a, we just don't have the pieces like we did? I don't know. But this is bad. And they were booing loud. I didn't know they had enough fans that showed up at the games to boo as loud as they were booing last night, Michael. They were booing. They were disgusted. Like every play, you would hear it again. The the long pass where Tyler Huntley somehow, the first time in his life, Tyree kills overthrown. You heard the ah, and then it melted right back into boo. I mean, it was, I, I was impressed. I didn't think the fan base for the Dolphins was that passionate to muster the will to boo after every freaking play. That's how bad it's gotten in Miami. Whose fault is it? It was so bad. <laughs> they are they are really in a rut. And you said it. You asked the question, is Tua a superhero? Apparently, yes. Because the it, whose reputation has risen uh, in the in the absence uh, of Tua? It's Tua's. And Mike McDaniels has gone down. I, I guess the positive you could say for Mike McDaniel is that he built an offense that really had Tua in mind more than we realized. Because think about it, before uh, Tua's injury, I know a lot of people outside of South Florida thought, okay, if you put a decent quarterback in Tua's place, as long as you have Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle, and you got Mostert, and you got all these guys, you got all, these, all this speed in the backfield, you'll be fine. And you got Mike McDaniel who designs cool plays. No. And I know these quarterbacks aren't great. You know, you have to when you go from Skylar Thompson to Snoop Huntley, and you're and you're thinking, oh, maybe Tim Boyle can give us something. Get Huntley out of there and get Boyle in. You don't have a lot of great options. But this is, I thought Mike McDaniel and the Dolphins had a little bit more than this, just a little bit, and to the point, Mike, where I'm saying next week. I don't know who I'm going to pick. Will I pick the Patriots or Dolphins? And that's who you got next week. So do they have enough to beat the Patriots? I didn't even think that was a question, even without Tua being on the field. It really is amazing. When we just had the conversation about all of the quarterbacks out there who have second life and who prove to be competent beyond that, beyond that. There's always a cluster of veterans who are available in any given offseason. And if we learned nothing last year, it's incumbent on every team to have a competent backup quarterback who can step in at a moment's notice and get it done. And Joe Flacco 
the comeback player of the year in 2023, who the Browns didn't want back because they didn't want the Flacco chance, a cacophony of we want Joe when they're trying to get a return on their Deshaun Watson investment. They couldn't bring him back because he'd be playing right now in Cleveland if he was back there. The fans would revolt if they didn't bench Deshaun Watson and go with Joe Flacco. The Colts get him, and what do they do? They win a game because Flacco comes in after Anthony Richardson gets injured early and wins the game. And I know it's a different offensive style between Flacco and Tua, but, man, anybody could have signed Flacco. And shame on the Dolphins for not – of all the teams, Michael, the Miami Dolphins are the one that needs to have somebody ready to go. The injury history, the concussion history did not become expunged because he didn't suffer one last year. It was still there. It was lurking. We all knew it or should have known it. How do the Dolphins not have a better option than Skylar Thompson? And all due respect to Skylar Thompson, he hasn't played much. And when he's played, it's not like he's done anything that makes us say, hey, that's a guy who's got a bright future in the NFL. And I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but I'm trying to be accurate and honest. Why do you not have a proven veteran behind Tua who can do all that stuff underneath that sleight of hand shell game stuff that really gives an extra dimension to their offense and confuses the hell out of the defense? You got none of that with these other guys, which does show that that's one of Tua's superpowers, but that's a superpower that can be taught through repetition and you get a veteran in there and you can get him doing those same things too. I just think it's a failure by the organization to not have a better QB2 because you know your QB1 can suffer a concussion on any given play. And Mike, excellent point. We've talked about this before. We talked about this right after the Buffalo game when when Tua uh, went down. And it was asking a question, did they have the conversation before agreeing to the contract and it's a tough conversation. Do they have the conversation among themselves? Do they have the conversation with Tua of just, hey, this is the risk. This is why we have a little bit of hesitation. We understand who you are uh, as a man and as a quarterback, but we do have some concerns. And if they don't have that conversation with Tua, they certainly should be having that uh, in the front offices in their, in their private meetings because you, you mentioned Joe Flacco, but think about some other quarterbacks who moved – uh, in the offseason for very, very low returns. I mean, Kenny Pickett, not that I think he's great, but Kenny Pickett went to Philadelphia for, what, a six-round pick? Mac, Mac Jones, six-round six pick going to uh, Jacksonville. And I know Mike McDaniel was on that staff with Kyle Shanahan. There were rumors before they took Trey Lance. When they, when they moved up to three, remember we had some rumors that Kyle Shanahan – really was impressed with Mac Jones, could understand his knowledge uh, was impeccable, and he'd be the perfect quarterback for that system. So you got Kenny Pickett, you got Mac Jones, you've got Zach Wilson, you mentioned him earlier. Was that a seventh-round pick he went for? So uh, not that I I don't think any of these guys are uh, amazing quarterbacks, but you better have something better in place than Skylar Thompson and going to the practice squad to, to get Tyler Huntley and hoping that Tim Boyle can give you a spark. I mean, that's just, that's just not good enough when you're a team that thinks uh, you've got, enough, you've got a, a championship level or at least a division-winning level. Well, and, you know, the other concern I have here, and I understand that reporters have a job to do, but I just get concerned with the the breathless reporting about how Tua's symptoms are gone and Tua really wants to play and Tua's planning to come back as soon as possible. Like, I mean, have have we forgotten what we saw on that first Thursday night game of the season? And, And this is the problem with it, Michael, and we probably framed it this way the morning after it happened. The problem is... He's going to go right back into the very circumstance that caused the last concussion. This wasn't some fluke thing. I'm walking down the street and something fell on my head. This is, I'm walking into a a spot where things fall on your head all the time. This can happen. 
And when you add that urgency, because I think it was the urgency of the moment that Thursday night that caused him to suffer the concussion in the first place, he's going to come back and he's going to want to throw caution to the wind. He's going to want to make up for the struggles of the team in his absence, and he's going to be susceptible to another one. That's the problem with this. Oh, he's cleared. Oh, everything's great. Oh, he's coming back. Oh, he's going to be back in the exact same situation he was in when he suffered the last concussion, and we just kind of hold our breath and wait. I, I just, I just, I get concerned when I hear without the other side of it. Oh, he's ready to go. Oh, the symptoms are gone. Oh, he's coming back. Well, are we still sure this is the right thing for him to do? Are we sure that he should come back the first moment that he can when the injured reserve stint is over? I, I'm not hearing any reporting about that side of it. All I'm hearing is, oh, he's fine. Oh, he's feeling good. Oh, he's anxious to play. Oh, he's dialed in. I, I just I'm concerned about about that leading to yet another concussion for Tua Tonga Bailoa. Yeah, me too. I, I'm with you, Mike. And we're all we're all more knowledgeable now as football fans, football observers than we were, you know, 10 or 15 years ago. So we get it. I mean, this is no uh, opportunity to stand on a soapbox for me. I, mean, I love watching football, and so I understand that. You know, concussions can happen to anybody in any game. And so th that's, that's part of, I mean, that's part of the deal of, of watching. You know that, that this, is a, uh, this is a high intensity, uh, violent game, and we watch it and, and concussions can happen. So everybody understands that. But for Tua, it's different because we have now followed his concussions in high profile games. And we know now we know terms that we didn't know 15 years ago, like fencing. So when he goes down and he gets into the fencing position, we know that that is, a, that is the brain signal to the body that something is, something is dramatically wrong and the player is responding that way. So it's not, I'm not saying any concussion is something that you're looking for, but there are levels to it. And so he is getting these types of concussions that are leading to this response. And everybody doesn't get that during a concussion. It just lets you know that any, it doesn't take a big hit for Tua to be in trouble. I got to say, uh, take, the, take Tua the person out of it. Tua the player, I do not want to watch him again. I don't want to watch him. It's, it's too, it, it makes me nervous. You're right. I, I just can't think of any good reason to put him back in the, uh, on the field in October. Let's say a month from today uh, or, or, or two weeks from today. Tua is back out there? Really? You're going to put him back on the field, Mike? How do you justify that? Like, what's the reason? I, 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 I think the best thing for all involved is to buy more time and put him on IR for the rest of the year. He's eligible to return, and I saw week eight. You have to miss at least four games, four, five, three, four, five, week, week six by. So, yes, he would have to miss the week seven game against the Colts. He's eligible to come back Sunday, October 27, home game against the Cardinals with a trip to Buffalo one week after that. The problem I have with this, and, and the report from last night from ESPN was he's symptom-free and is on track to return at the earliest possible date, week eight. The circumstances are such with the Dolphins that I don't know that it's good for anybody to say two is going to save the day. You know, look how bad it is. We know the season's falling apart, and who knows how many games they're going to win over the next few weeks. But we, you know, Tua returns and he's got this superpower running this offense. And there's the greater sense of urgency because things are really, really bad. It just doesn't set up for a good outcome. It does, it's just not the right place to come back. You know, it was all about no timelines, no urgency. Let's give him time to fully recover and understand what he's going to do. But, boy, we really need him back there. We, 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 you know, and he feels that. They let him fly to Seattle to be on the sideline for that game. He was on the sideline for last night's game. He's more and more involved. He feels the magnet pulling him back to the field. That's why I said at one point it's better for him not to return at all this year 
and make a good long-term decision after the season. So now as all of these reports are emerging at a time when the Dolphins are crumbling, of course he's going to push to come back. I just, in moments like this, I want to know where the grown-ups in the room are who are able to, to just, like Mike McDaniel was at first. He was the grown-up in the room at first. I just wonder if that mindset is going to trickle into what we feel like is the momentum that's building toward to his return because they really need him back on the field as we saw last night. Yeah, you're right. And it's, it's, uh, it's easier to be the adult in the room when it's early in the season. So it's just one loss and you think, all right, we've got enough in place to get by, to get by, to get us through. And then you start to figure out that you don't have enough in place. You're sitting there at one and three and your offseason comes back to haunt you because it goes back to the beginning of this conversation. You didn't do enough. You didn't plan well enough for the scenario where two is not there, not just for a game, but two is, two is gone for at least four. And so your plan, and so far, this is who we've seen. We've seen Thompson. We've seen Boyle. We've seen Huntley. The, that's your plan. I don't know who we're going to see next week. Maybe Huntley again. Maybe it's Boyle's turn. Maybe Skyler returns. Like this is, you can't, because you've done a bad job of planning, you can't then make things worse by rushing to a back and, or bringing him back at all. I'm, I'm, I'm leaning toward that. I just, I think the season's gone for them. I, I, I think it's at, at one and three. I just don't think there's going to be a, uh, a recovery for the Dolphins. And so are you bringing him back because this is what he does and football players play, as Bill Parcells once said, football players play on Sunday? Or are you bringing him back because you think that you still have a chance to reach your goals in 2024? And it's an excellent point because they have a winnable game against the Patriots that they very well might not win on Sunday on the road by week, and then they're at Indianapolis. You lose the next two, you're one and five. You win one of the next two, you're two and four, when Tua returns, if he comes back the earliest day possible, week eight, at home, Cardinals. And, yeah, that, that urgency, save us, Tua, you're our only hope. I, I don't know that is the way that he should be returning. Those aren't the right conditions for a guy, but there are no right conditions. See, I'm I'm struggling with this in my own mind. There are no right conditions because he's stepping back into a fray that has already concussed him at least four times. Mm-hmm. But it's worse. It's never going to be ideal, but it's worse when it's man. We really need Tua to be Tua, and Tua's been watching all these games and he's been as frustrated as anyone else, and he just wants to get back there and show what he can do. This is just not. It's, it's not a good situation for anybody. And I would ask our colleagues in the media to at least factor in the human side of this when you're checking the box and impressing your producers and editors that you have the scoop that Tua is symptom-free and he's on track to return. Add the context or at least raise the question as to whether or not he should be returning on the earliest possible date. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.